Well, first of all, I'm glad to be in Clendenna, but not under these conditions. And uh, but just want to uh, uh, say that uh, you know how sorry I am for the people uh, that have uh, lost their lives in this event. This has been one of the largest uh, kind of drownings and, and losses of life that we've had in West Virginia in many years, uh, almost probably since the Buffalo Creek flood. But uh, you know, uh, we're, we're strong people in West Virginia, we're resilient, and one of the things I love about being a West Virginian is, as I've traveled around the, to the, uh, the stricken area, is just to see the outpouring of love and care that West Virginians have for each other by helping each other out. Those who weren't affected are down in the mud, they're shoveling, they're doing everything they can to get their friends and neighbors back at their homes, just as the same way that I see it's going on here in Glendenna today. And, uh, you know, we're working together. I'm pleased to have President of the County Commission, Kent Carper, got uh, 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 Senator Palumbo and uh, Speaker of the House here, along with uh, the Reverend Delegates. I mean, uh, uh, FEMA, we're all been working very hard together. But it's one of those kind of events that we I only have maybe once in a lifetime. And, uh, you know, I've, I've come from Logan County and, and I've come through hundreds of floods in my life. But, you know, to see water this high, this quick, with this much devastation is almost unheard of. Just a, a couple of things that uh, I would like to uh, talk about. Uh, one of the questions that was asked of me is, uh, uh, what are people to do now? Were their homes flooded? Do they go in? Do they tear out? Uh, to, do they uh, start tearing out the drywall? Do they get rid of their furniture? And you know, it would be my advice. And we do have a representative, Al Lewis, here from FEMA. Uh, who's assigned uh, to us to uh, coordinate the efforts uh, since we've been approved in three of our counties already as a uh, presidential uh, uh, disaster declaration and uh, maybe to talk about just so people out there will know what they should do. And Al, if you would come up and, and just uh, maybe go through a checklist of what folks should do in order to, to, to protect themselves, to save their homes, and get their lives back in order. I appreciate it, Governor. So uh, first and foremost, it starts with registering. So uh, everybody needs to know the 1-800-621-FEMA. Again, 1-800-621-FEMA. Uh, the second question that was asked to me about uh, the folks that want to go ahead and start tearing out sheetrock, uh, document. Take, say, take some pictures of the damages in your home before you do anything, and then if you got the volunteers, you got the capability to start doing that, start the recovery process for yourself. Furniture, fixtures, those kind of things. A any of that thing. kind of stuff. Take the pictures, uh, make sure that uh, you document the damage, uh, uh, and uh, we will, once you register, uh, those homeowners then will have inspection services will come in and uh, work directly with the homeowner to inspect it and look at uh, what they're uh, covered for if they're not covered by insurance. Sir, can you just ID yourself, please? I, again, I'm, I'm Al B. Lewis. I'm the federal coordinating officer. I'm the uh, senior individual here uh, in, in, uh, in the state representing the president. L-E-W-I-S. L-E-W-I-S. First name, Al B. A-L-B-I-E. I come from a small state, Vermont, very hilly, very mountainous, just like this. And uh, we went through this with uh, Irene, so I know what you're all going through. It was good speaking to the fire chief and uh, comparing some notes. So my heart goes out to all of you. I know what you're doing, and it's awful good to see all the uh, neighbor helping neighbor here. Thank Mr. you. Lewis, everybody wants something to happen right now. Of course. What's a, what's a realistic timeline for things to start rolling? We're, we're looking at opening a DRC, a Disaster Recovery Center here, which will uh, be a point of contact for the community. And we, uh, we should be in here Wednesday. That's uh, the objective right now. Uh, we're looking at a couple of facilities. Uh, once those are approved for access, accessibility, et cetera, then we'll be able to come in and uh, set, set up for that. Uh, we already are, in fact, sending supplies, commodities, water, food uh, to those areas that need it. I work directly with Jimmy, your state director, uh, on where the need is the greatest, and, and we provide that. Okay. Let me just uh, also thank our first responders uh, doing what they always do best, and uh, you know they work so hard. Whether it's the EMTs, the fire departments, you know uh, everyone's out there, you know, and, and put their own lives to risk. I mean, in this in this case, I've heard stories today of of our state police who were. Yeah, state police get a little scared, but when the, when the boat starts rocking, but, 
when they're out on one of these flooded streams trying to rescue some uh, elderly person with water up to their neck and the, the boat twisting and so, so forth. You know, that's what they're doing out there. They're putting their, their own lives at risk to save other people. And I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for our first responders, for everything you do, not only at this event, but throughout the year. I want to thank uh, the County Commission for the cooperation we're having. They're providing a lot of to getting rid of the uh, 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 soil furniture and so forth. You see a lot of trucks here. They're taking care of that for us. Uh, and so everyone that's working together, our Red Cross, obviously, VOAD is, uh, has been very active. Uh, people calling, that's usually who we have them call. If they, and so many people have called wanting to volunteer, wanting to help their fellow West Virginian. And either uh, Red Cross or, or uh, VOAD are two good groups. They know where the deed's at, and they can get you in to, to, to help the people of West Virginia. So, so far, we've, uh, I've uh, had uh, offers from at least uh, half a dozen governors wanting to know if there's any way they can send any help in and, and so forth. So it's not only the people of West Virginia helping our West Virginians, but people from around the country. And we're so grateful for everything the people's doing for us and offer to do for us. So... Any further questions? Governor, you've got a lot of people hurting here, obviously. We do. A lot of people underinsured or no insurance at all for flood. What do you say to them to give them a little comfort about the future going forward when there's so much uncertainty? Well, at this event, because we did get the uh, personal uh, uh, declaration for the personal good, I think that we will be able to help those people with the, uh, Jimmy, with the, uh, the, the individual assistance uh, that they can get. And that's one of those things that's so important about as Al said, uh, getting the documentation, the pictures and so forth, so of the furniture, fixtures, whatever it may be, or damage to your home, make sure that you, that you document that because you will should be eligible for the uh, personal assistance from the federal government. That's a 75-25 match with the state of West Virginia. You know, it, I, I really can't compare it to 1985, which was a terrific uh, uh, flood and, and lots of damage. We're still doing assessments out there every day. There are thousands of homes that, in my opinion, will not be inhabitable again. Thousands of other ones that will need some kind of rehab done to them or, or, or fix it up. And, you know, same thing with businesses. Uh, we were in Raynell earlier today, and at least 90% of the homes and businesses were, were there. And the thing that you know concerns me as much as anything else, considering our, our current uh, economy in West Virginia with the amount of people we got laid off, the high unemployment rates and so forth, especially in the coal fields, that now with all these small businesses who employ about 90% of our people, small businesses generally, with all these businesses closed down, we've got people now without jobs. And you know, obviously, you know, as we go into the reco the uh, uh, recovery part of this, you know, we need to be thinking and, and and spending our dollars wisely on how we can go in and help these businesses get back in business as quickly as possible, so they can get employees back working again and get people's lives back together. But it's going to be a big a big problem for us because you know when you see devastation like you have here in Clinton, it's going to take some time time for people to get their homes and their lives back in order. So right now we have about 500 men and women on duty. We'll probably surge up to 700. Uh, the governor and Jimmy and I have talked. We're going to be probably in a steady state of a couple hundred guardsmen for a significant period of time for the next uh, several weeks to try to work through this issue. So uh, we're primarily still focused on the, the rescue piece but at the same time now simultaneously in the recovery mode. So while we've got men and women still out checking various places and we all know West Virginia's terrain and there are still people that we need to get to and ensure that they're okay. But at the same time, we've got dump trucks and loaders out removing debris and working throughout the state. But it's gonna be a significant, significant workload for the guard and our partner first responders and law enforcement and volunteers for a significant period of time. Yeah, along with that, I know Jimmy and, and, and the members of the Guard, as he said, we have 500 deployed right now. We'll probably bring that up to 700 
through the next day or so as, uh, as some of them transition in and out. Obviously our highways have taken a big hit. Some areas, roads completely washed out, bridges washed out. It will be a very uh, expensive proposition, but uh, we are doing everything we can to make sure especially all of our primary routes are open first and, you know, and move as quickly as we can to our secondary roads to get people back into their areas. You can't do damage assessments, but is, it, is there any way to make an estimation on how much you might need out of the rainy day fund to dip into that $100 million, $200 million? <laughs> it's early to tell. The only thing I'll say is thank God we have a rainy day fund. You know, in, in, in talking to the people in the various communities, I think you know there was notice, there were storms coming, there was that pattern. One of the, the, the things and the reason I had such a, so many counties in, in the uh, uh, emergency proclamation uh, that I did is because the weather service really wasn't certain of the path that they were going to, it was going to take, and it could swing up 100 miles or down 100 miles, and and basically until it started hitting, you know, and, and it's such a, a heavy downpour with inches of rain falling in our mountainous terrain here, it's uh, you know, we we didn't know exactly how bad it was going to be. We didn't anticipate, it, I think, being as bad as it was with the heavy amount as, as we had. Can I follow up on that, Governor? How much? Oh, awesome. it just lightning. We need to move okay. away from this. Okay. Why was there so much loss? Just the, the massive size of the storm? Yeah, I mean, it, they had it, noticed? I mean, what, what happened? Well, I mean, I, I think they just came up so fast that no one was really expecting high water to this proportion. I mean, when was the last time Clendenin had it? I mean, if you look around, you know, Richwood, uh, 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 White Sulphur Springs, you know, I mean, the, the same thing happened just because of the amount of rain that came down so quickly. And in many cases, people were just basically walking along and almost being swept away because a, a deluge would come down the road or whatever and carry them away. So anyhow, uh, the Reverend tells me it's uh, we're getting lightning and it's time to go in the church. Listen to the Reverend. Thank you. <laughs>